Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet. Thank you so, so much for tuning in to Weddings Unveiled. And today, I'm so excited to talk with my good friend, Daniel Spires. Daniel is with the estate at Cherokee Dock, which is actually the former residence of country music superstar, author, and actor, Reba McIntyre. I actually grew up not too far down the road from this house. I grew up in Mount Juliet, and this is the city over in Lebanon, so I'm very familiar, and it is a beautiful property. I'm going to invite Daniel on, and he's going to tell us all about it. Thanks, Daniel, for coming today. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me, Angela. Of course. Let's jump off by telling everybody a little bit about you first. Like, what was your, what's your background? Because you actually have a very fascinating background. I do have a fascinating background. So I came from a very strong sales background. I worked for a Fortune 50 company selling telecommunications for many years and then kind of got burned out. I was... What? Yeah, me. Can you believe me? What's that? Burnout. Yeah, so I got kind of tired of sitting in a cubicle, making phone calls, selling things, and kind of boring for me. So I kind of moved out of that space and did some entrepreneurial things. I opened up some small businesses that were unsuccessful. Fail fast. Yeah, right. I did very fast. So I had some small businesses. They failed fast, thank God. And I, I got into a mode where someone came and asked me one time to help them do some things at an event. And I was like... Okay, yeah, sure, I'll help you out. Got into that, had a really good time, and was like, all right, cool, back to work. Then my sister got married, and my mom was at a point where she had a very limited budget, and she asked me, she said, hey, she said, would you be interested in helping with your sister's wedding? I was like, well, what do you want me to do? She's like, I don't know, what do we do? And I was like, um, oh, God. (laughs) So I helped my, I planned my sister's whole wedding and it was really successful. Wow. It turned out great, actually. For what it was, it turned out really wonderful for the budget that we were working with. It was minimal. So I got into this, the event space kind of there. That was my start. Moved on to a few different companies. And then I landed at Chef's Market with Jim Heggie. John Heggie is one of my best friends. And John said, come on, work for us. So I was with Jim for a little while. And then I met the wonderful folks at the estate at Cherokee Dock right after they purchased it. And they, How did you meet them? I met them at their open house. Oh, okay. I was bartending the bar underneath the big tent. And Megan came to me and she was like, hey, how are you? And we talked and talked and we... Ended up having phone conversations, text communications, and finally she was like, do you want to come out here and work? And I was like, okay, I have experience. I managed a $12 million piece of property in Franklin, so I have estate management experience. I had enough event experience to be dangerous, and I had the passion to love it, which I think is the most important thing. 100%. Yep. So, and the energy for it, might I also add. So I went to the estate, and it's been bliss ever since. It, that's amazing. It's funny because Daniel and I did not know that we would be working so closely together. I was doing a holiday party for Pickler and Ben, which is a new daytime talk show that is being filmed here in Nashville. I did Kelly Pickler's wedding, God, it was probably like eight or so years ago. And we just became the bestest of friends. And I love, love her and Kyle. And so anything that they plan on the show they're like hey Ange can you like help us out here and they give me like a week's notice but it's all good it's all good I love those kinds of things because they don't have time to change your mind Mm -hmm. so I walk in I'm like "Ooh, these flowers look good and like this looks good and we had some other things going on that week and so I just kind of had to 
give up my control freak design ways and, you know, collaborate with their designers that are on set, which was totally fine. But I walked in and I'm like, damn, this all looks good. You girls did good. And they're like, well, that's Daniel over there. And he's with Chef's Market. And we like met for a hot second because I was just like, I literally got there at the very end of the party. And I was like, hi, bye. Ah!" I mean, it was just crazy. And then fast forward a few weeks and... In between those weeks, I was meeting with the people that purchased Cherokee and teaching them about true colors and about how to hire the right people to make sure that your sales are successful. Not only is the property beautiful, and not only is it the former home of a literally major, major country superstar, but you can have a beautiful space and a great history, but if you don't have the right salesperson, especially for luxury weddings, you're just smushing yourself. And so they're like, well, we met this guy and we think he'd be perfect but I didn't know who it was and I little did I know that I'd already met you and then they expanded their team after you and we brought did. on Aaron we did and they use true colors to put Daniel in place we do we do yes and to put Aaron in place mm-hmm. and then I had the honor of doing the first wedding there that um, beautiful yeah that just happened not too long ago it could not have been any more perfect mainly the weather which we are not in control of um and lots of crazy fun things happen behind the scenes but we won't talk about that today that's a different podcast but it's just almost been like very serendipity that all this has come full circle and there's so much opportunity and growth that I want our listeners to know about today about the estate of Cherokee. So we know how you got into the wedding and events industry and what would you say is super special and unique about what Cherokee Doc offers? So, you know, the good thing about Cherokee Doc is we are unique. There are a hundred event venues out there that you can go to that are beautiful and luxurious and that have beautiful grounds. Cherokee Dock, we offer something a lot different. Our customer experience is on point. And first and foremost, it's been incredible. In fact, I've worked with various planners in the industry and we've had meetings with the couples and they come out of the meetings and they're like, they want you to plan their whole wedding, Daniel. And I'm like, well... (laughs) So I can't, Um, that's not what I do. I run a venue. And so it's really interesting because the people have gravitated to, to Aaron and I, because, you know, we try to make the experience pleasurable and fun and engaging. So fun. We do. We keep it fun. Um, We want to give a lot more yeses than we give no's to our clients. Uh, I think that's very important. The other thing with us um, outside of the customer service aspect specifically is the fact that we offer overnight accommodations. Yes. What we do is we have brides and grooms that come to us for a Saturday wedding and it turns into a wedding weekend. What that does for the bride and the groom is it gives them a or chance. Or the couple. Yes, or the couple, yes. You do same-sex weddings. Oh gosh, can't wait to do my first. <laughs> so yeah, so the couple, it turns it into a better experience for them. It's it's more spaced out. It's uh, more enjoyable. Instead of rushing into the facility, rushing through the wedding, hurrying up and getting out by 11 o'clock, it's a much more laid back experience for our clients and we've had the best, best, best turnout with it. So if you were to lead a blind person down the pathway of Cherokee and we started at the security gate and the gates open with my eyes closed, describe first moment just all the way through, like all the way down the driveway, through the house, to the back of the house, like give them some landscape information and like it's on the water and like the the courtyard just tell them so this is actually really fun for me i didn't know what i was walking into at cherokee when i got there we have probably in excess of a half million to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of very exquisite landscaping and i love horticulture naturally so i didn't know that i was landing in like my heaven so i pull up to the gate and I'm at 175 Cherokee Dock Road. You come through our wonderful iron gate and the entryway to the home is a very, very long, it's probably about an eighth of a mile of winding area that goes through beautiful lush grass and it's all lined with 20 year old willow oaks that create the most amazing canopy over the opening to the, or the entrance way to the home. As you're driving up the driveway, you'll have the lake in the background. You will have a wonderful, wonderful view of all of the trees and the canopies that are on the property. The main part 
of the front of the house is basically a park is basically what you're looking at water fountain Mm -hmm. with lights not cheesy lights no like beautiful lights so once you get to the roundabout in front of the house roundabout that's what it's called the roundabout in front of the house you've got an amazing pond that has two tiers it is lushly planted with crimson queen lace japanese maples it's got Habari from Japan. It has got the most amazing, exquisite, unusual landscape to it. As you go towards the house, it's a two, pardon me, it's a three story, four level Greek revival that is more modern. So it's not your typical Southern mansion. It's got a little bit of a twist of modern to it. To the right, you've got a private boat dock. and That you can get married on. That you can get married on. And pull a boat up to it. And pull a boat up to it. Or have a fireworks display from. Or to do a leave from. It's beautiful. Um, And private. And very private. Once you're inside the home, I won't go through every room with you because that would take a long time. But they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Just start with the master because it's not favorite so the master bedroom was the bride's room the bride's room and it is our bridal suite it is actually a very very large bedroom with automatic electronic curtains a private balcony two fireplaces and it has a what would you call the bathroom it's not really a bathroom it's more of a it's like a place where you can like just spread all your shit out yeah, <laughs> and I mean, do hair and makeup. It's and got professional hair and makeup lighting. and it's... It does. And then my favorite that leads into that, I'm totally interrupting you, no. but I'm so excited. It's got like this laundry type thing. What is that thing called? It's, it's like you're at the dry cleaner. It's at the dry cleaner. It's a, it's a conveyor a system. A conveyor. Mm-hmm. And you push a button and I don't know if it does this. I'm making this up in my head, but what if you wanted to wear black that day mm-hmm. or red or pink and like everything's organized but the closet tell them three stories that is three stories we'll have to post pictures on the blog when this podcast airs because the oh my god it's just every woman's dream yeah it's crazy it's literally a three-story closet um it has it's outfitted also with three of those conveyor systems and three of the closet it has a secret hiding place for a jewelry vault which I'm not sure if I ever showed you that. But yeah, three stories. I ain't stories. got no jewelry to put in it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so three stories, guys. That's our bridal suite. Um, you've got a lush, lush, lush group of, of bedrooms that are very, very, very accommodating. Wonderful linens. Um, I'll walk you out to our groom's quarters, which is oh, nestled. it's beautiful. It is. It's nestled above our four horse stable, which is... I hate even calling it a stable. It's solid oak paneled. It's got chandeliers. It's gorgeous. Up above... You will have a seven-person bachelor headquarters, basically, is what it is. I've never seen anything like it. It's uh, So you've got a 70-inch television in there with a large, large sectional sofa, um, gaming system, PlayStation. You've also got five grooms bunks that you can crash into. They're twin-sized bunks. But they're not the kind of bunks you're thinking, peeps, okay? They're not this... They're Bunk not beds. up and down. It's like, a, they're nook. horizontal. Right. And the way that it's just decorated and the design and the architect, it is freaking amazing. And then tell them about the barber. So after you walk through, you have two wonderful showers to get ready in on tankless water. That say get naked. They do. They say On get, the floor. The floor says get naked before you get in the shower, which hopefully you would. Detail, detail, detail. Yeah. So you walk through the groom suite and in the back, you go through a little hallway and you have a barber's area so if you want to bring your barber in for a hot shave or a high and tight haircut you've got it it's ready to go bring him in so awesome and then on the event side right outside the groom's quarters tell them a little bit about the courtyard and then what you all have done to accommodate storage and vendors and load in and load out and then currently what's out there over the past tennis courts, which is now an amazing event center, and what's to come. Yeah, so essentially outside of that awesome stable slash groom's headquarters space that you have, we also have a cobblestone... Courtyard. Courtyard. It's a courtyard. Yeah, it's a, co- it's it's a cobblestone co- or courtyard. And that butts right up to ladies and men's restrooms. And we also have a family facility also in there for handicap usage. And we'd like to remain ADA compliant. It's very, very, very important to us. We also added a state-of-the-art catering kitchen. And for me, this is huge. I've catered out of closets. I've catered out of laundry rooms. I've catered out of bathrooms. Tents. If I'm lucky. 
I have catered out of some of the most ridiculous spaces, and our parent company is actually a company that manufactures food warming equipment. Not only do you have an amazing catering kitchen, you've got uh, three base sinks, you've got a dump sink, you've got three stainless steel prep tables, refrigeration and freezing, and then all of FWE's hot boxes. Which, from a planner's perspective, for you planners listening out there, having to rent all of those items and your client having to pay for it can really add thousands and thousands of dollars to your rental bill. And if you are not renting those things, and if you're not that familiar with your caterer, they could be renting it and adding it to your bill, and they you are. just don't know that. They are. So we were just having a conversation about how the investment of owning your own equipment at a venue is so, so important, because oftentimes we walk into no space, uh, no prep space. Yep. And a sink, if we're lucky, if we have running water. And so the stuff that we have dealt with behind the scenes, people have no idea. Like this is very luxurious for a caterer and then a planner who's working on a budget. It's like that frees up money for things to just look more beautiful when actually, well, you don't have to do a whole lot out there because it's already beautiful. Like the grounds and the property is just amazing. And so tell them about when you pass through all the vendor area, then yep. you've got the actual event space. Yeah. So after you walk through our the breezeway that has the restrooms and then also the catering kitchen, you've got a storage area for your planner, which is really important. Guys, we're really trying to accommodate planners here. If you don't have a planner, you don't come to the state at Cherokee Dock. We That's something we require. And we do it to make sure that our couples are safe and protected and so that they have a good event. So always keep that in mind. Once you've rocked, walked through that space you've got a 105 by 50 foot tent it's a gable ended um 15 foot bay blackout white tent why we did that why did we not just rent it why did we buy it well for us a tent rental is very expensive you know if a bride and groom come in they love our space and in the 11th hour we have to tell them hey you uh you need a ten thousand dollar tent over this thing because it's gonna rain yeah, so we've kind of taken the guesswork out of it for our clients. One of the things that we focus on at Cherokee Angela is we want our planners to come to us because ease of use. We're easy to use. We're easy to get along with. We have things ready. It's a very simple process. And they don't have the N-O word in the vocabulary unless it's just absolutely silly, unreasonable. Glass by the pool. Yeah, glass by the pool. That's a no-no. However, investing in the glassware that looks beautiful like glass, we're not using plastic around mm -hmm. there. But as long as we have appropriate glassware that's shatterproof, which is what you all use, is is amazing. Yep. Um, so it's really a beautiful property. If you have a bride or a couple that's looking to do destination wedding for three or four days, which is what my last client did out there, they had all these guests fly in from India and they really, really all said that they felt like it was their home away from home, which is really important. The kitchen's amazing. Everybody stayed up late at night and gathered around that big, beautiful island. And how do I know this? Because I was there loading in four days. It was amazing. Late nights. Late nights. So what would you say is like the number one thing, aside from like the customer service and that they have use of the property and you guys aren't super strict, like on a vendor perspective, it's like 12 hours and it's $500 each additional hour. It's like if we have to do a load in and space it out, it's like whatever is going to work best for everyone. And we all collaborate and have planning meetings. So, of course, the vendors love that. But what would you say the clients, like the couples, what do they love most about it? Number one, hands down, the thing that our clients love about our state is the nature and the landscaping. That is what pulls them in. We are not an indoor venue and we're not an outdoor venue. Right. We are kind of a mix of both. The tent will be going away and being turned into a very different space, a pavilion that's going to have some... Upscale. Yeah, it's going to be a really new thing. But for us, really, that's what our brides and grooms see when they pull up, even in the dead of the winter, when the leaves are off the trees, everything looks awful. They pull up and they say this is so beautiful and it is. And then when it buds out in the spring and they come back to look at it again, they're like, this is incredible. And it's really nothing guys that I can ever explain to you. And our website doesn't even do it justice. 
once you get to the property, the nature is unbelievable. We have bald eagles. We have ducks. We have geese. We have baby turtles. We have everything. Bullfrogs chirping in the background at night. You have crickets. It is I can't describe it. It's beautiful. And you can sit outside around the fire pit and look up and like see all the stars. And it's just really, really amazing. And for someone like me who hates the outdoors because I'm allergic to it, I will have to say that they do take care of the lawn better than any place I've ever seen. Like better than Opryland, which is like an indoor rainforest here in Nashville. And usually when I have to work outdoors for four days straight, I literally have bites everywhere, even though they've told me they sprayed for bugs. Um, But this property is, I've never seen anything like it in terms of it being very manicured. Um, And you guys don't only do just weddings, like you also service corporate events, political events, non-for-profit events. So from a corporate standpoint, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, guys. So from a corporate perspective, we, we, we're, we're a great destination. A lot of the corporate planners, they want to get out of hotels, you know, even though it's a thing where, Hey, we're coming in town, we're having a sales conference, blah, blah, blah. Who wants to sit in a carpeted hotel banquet room? I mean, nobody, they're awful. So what we're doing to accommodate is we are putting in place, and I mentioned it a little bit just previously, we're putting in place a pavilion that will have phases to its build out that will accommodate 500 people from a seated perspective. Not like, hey, we can squeeze 500 people in here, but you actually can't. Like, it's going to be 500 very comfortably seated. Audio, video, everything great. So we can get those people out of those hotel rooms and get them in and come out. We also have um, corporate retreats on the books for some large companies that are coming into town. They're doing VIP parties. We have those coming out for corporate It's great if you want to impress your clients also. If you own a law firm, you've got high-end clients, you want to host a party, it's wonderful for that. It's just, like you said, it's something different. It's Mm -hmm. something unique. And the way that everything is decorated and all of the freshen up stuff that's been done, it's just just really incredible, guys. Um, So... Aside from like, I mean, you you guys are a a newer venue right now. Um, And so not to date the podcast or anything, but can you share with us, have there been many challenges that you have found with brides or getting into the event industry or the market? Um, Share with us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we are new to the industry. I would say we're very young. Um, I, I don't have event venue management experience. So this is a learning process for me also. And not only am I Freda Angela's, but we are actually one of her clients also. Um, there have been a lot of things that we have learned. This is a learning process. There are things we are going to continue to learn um, through this process. But yeah, I mean, some of the things that I'm seeing what people like ease of use. I mean, that's something they like. One of the things also that kind of blindsided us on a situation we had, we had a situation where I never put a lot of thought around security. I always thought, oh, okay, you know, we'll talk about it at some point. If the wedding hits 200 people, we require security and we'll kind of let them handle it and we'll make the recommendation. Guys, we keep security in house now. We had an incident at one of our first events that has now put us at a place where we're safeguarding ourselves. And we're trying to safeguard the livelihood of our business. Um, so, yeah, there have been a lot of those situations that we have, you know, they've been blind spots, you mm-hmm. know, um, and we just deal with them as they come. And even though I feel like, I mean, I've known the crew from day one, you know, even before we all met, um, you know, I was a part of helping them like write their policies and procedures and contracts and vendor policies and the pool policy and sat alongside the attorney. Just, I mean, attorneys are great and you've got to have them, but they don't do events every day and they definitely don't do weddings every day, which is emotional money spending and something that's really important as a venue, especially a, an expensive luxury venue. I mean, you want to have additional insurance and make sure that your client has insurance. I will say when you're at a private home, people really do act like they're home and they like to drink and they like to have fun. They, they get comfortable around day three. <laughs> they get very comfortable when they're there. I've noticed that. And we do. We require, we are insured very well. But beyond that, that's one of the things when we were working with Angela that we were working with you on that yep. we, um, you know, we put that in place and we do require that, you know, you've got to have a planner and you've got to have an outside insurance policy. It's a hundred bucks guys. Yeah. And you're totally safeguarding your livelihood. Yep. 
And the other thing too, like how have you guys um, handled, you know, being on a lake and having a pool and um, I mean, just to know that like you guys have a policy and procedure in place. Um, like one of the consultants that we were working with said, well, what about having, they're not like life jack, but like these buoy things. And I don't know, before our event, we, it took a lot of meeting time and, um, and also implementation time, not just talking about this stuff. And, and Daniel's like, oh, we already got them. They're, they're out there. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's one of the things when you have water, it, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a draw. It makes people sign our contract because they love being next to the water. The other part of that, it's a liability for us. So we have to be very careful. Um, some of the things we did, we put up no diving signs. We have put up swim at your own risk signs. We have built things into the policy that or into the contract so that people understand our policy on swimming and using the pool. We want you to use it. We just want you to be safe. No glass around the pool. We have safety uh, devices in place for... Um, for our events when people, if there was a drowning type situation. One of the other things we do from the perspective of guarding the pool during the event, we have one of the security people stationed at the pool so that if a little one got away from a parent and they got near it and there was a fall, our team is ready to handle that immediately. And I'm telling you guys, one bad accident can be the end of your business. 100%. Would you say in as far as like, since you are a newer venue, are you experiencing that your leads or your couples or brides are coming for a destination experience or are they more local? Like where, cause you're telling me the other day, I mean, kind of getting people from all over the place, but New York is really a hot market cause it's easy to get here. It, guys, even though if you're not in Nashville, I would say, I mean, for me personally, for planning and designing, 90% of my clients don't live here. They want a destination experience. And that's why Cherokee is such a wonderful place. Not only is it beautiful and they get that Nashville feel when it's only 35 minutes from downtown, depending on traffic, yep. but you can always provide a really nice bus and a shuttle. And it would be fun to get like a Reba McIntyre impersonator <laughs> to get to like sing for them. We do that a lot when we put I people on a bus. Um, and then of course we brand the hell out of the event. Um, but what would you say, like, what are people asking for? Like c- when they come there to have their, their wedding or their event? So a lot of our customers come to us initially. It's twofold. Right now we do get locals and they come to us looking for a plain Jane, one day, Saturday, in and out, done wedding. Out of everything we've booked. Because that's what they're potty trained to know. Yep. So they come to us for a day of. And then when we introduce all of the options and our methodology of how you can enjoy your wedding weekend and they see that and they envision it and we explain it to them. I've only signed two up for day of the rest of them are all overnights. That's amazing. Just the opportunity that, that you guys have there. Um, you guys have to check out the website. Just like you said, website doesn't do it justice at all, but it gives you a good idea. It does. Tell our listeners where they can find out more about the estate at Cherokee Dock. And then we have a special, special announcement. Yes. So you can find us at CherokeeDock.com. That's Cherokee and then Dock, D-O-C-K, dot com. Um, our social platforms are all at Cherokee Doc. And then on Insta, it's at Cherokee Doc underscore. We are very, very, very um, active in our social platforms. Thank you, Angela Prophet. <laughs> Um, so we're always uploading new content and always making sure everybody is aware of what we're doing on freshening up the property and changing things and making them more vibrant and exciting. So please follow us on all of our social platforms. You can reach us direct on the phone at 615-609-0099. So Daniel's blue for those of you who are familiar with True Colors and he loves to talk and build relationships. (laughs) It's funny. I'm like, don't, don't effing call me. (laughs) Marco Polo me or text me. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I love to talk to my clients and my friends, Um, but there has to be a purpose, Mm -hmm. (laughs) an agenda. Um, So for all of our listeners out there, we Mm -hmm. do have a special announcement that they have so graciously offered. So you want to tell them about that? Yes. So um, we're excited for all of you listeners. Um, The first one that contacts us on one of our social platforms after hearing this podcast or calls us direct or emails us at info at CherokeeDoc.com will receive a free 
three hour engagement and or bridal photo session. We don't supply the photographer. We supply you a $5 million estate. Which is amazing. And if you need help getting a photo person mm. and like a video person Easy. and some flowers, uh, we know a few people. So um, be sure to email, send a DM. That means direct message. It does. I didn't know it that does, yes. until recently. It does. I live in a, under a rock. Um, but guys, just check out this beautiful, beautiful venue. And again, they have gone above and beyond to make sure that, especially from a wedding perspective, and they're continuing to add more and more wonderful things. And again, we want to make sure like it's a great fit, not only for the venue, but for the client. And so it's not for everybody. But if you're looking for a weekend experience or several days with an event, it absolutely will take your breath away. It'll be unforgettable. Your people won't stop yep. talking about it. So thanks so much, Daniel, for coming on today. Thanks, Angela, for having me. And I'm excited for this to air. You guys have a great day, and thanks so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled. Bye! If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.